Okay, so I'm going to just start by telling you a little bit about myself. As you heard, I'm a landlocked surfer. That's me over there in Namibia at probably the most incredible natural thing in the whole world. That wave breaks like that for two kilometers. I'm sure most of you have no idea what that means, but it's amazing. Um, that is me at 19 years old. When I left school, I didn't go to university. I have no tertiary education. I'm completely self-taught. Um, and so I left school, and I very naively thought that I would have a super successful clothing business. So I started a surf clothing brand. That was that there. Um, and that was about 20 years ago, and I'm still um, starting businesses like that Warwick dude who said he's done 17 of them and failed. I haven't done that many, but um, that's basically life. Okay, that's my beautiful wife, Lindsay. She is a sign language interpreter at Wits University, which is partly why we live here in Johannesburg. Uh, those are my two kids, Summer and Ezekiel. Um, yeah, and they're awesome. Cool, so that's a little bit about me. Uh, the feast and famine cycle and why it sucks. Okay, so the feast and famine cycle, does everyone know what that is? I'm sure you do if you're in this room. Okay, so I've been doing it for 20 years, basically. It's like when you get a big job or a whole bunch of big jobs all at once and then the money comes pouring down and you think, this is it, like I've made it. And then two months later, you've literally got no work and it's dried up. And you've had to learn the skill of not spending all that money when it comes in. So when my wife and I got married, she worked with me in the business I had at the time, which was basically doing graphic design and video production. And so we made videos for government in the Eastern Cape, and they would typically pay, take 90 to 120 to 150 days to pay. And some of those jobs were really uh, lucrative, but there were months where like, I would make 500 bucks, and then there were months where I'd make like 85 grand. You know? So that's kind of the feast and famine cycle. And you have to learn how to uh, live well below what you, your income is on those high months, and then um, learn how to, like, so that you'd have money left when there's nothing, right? So what I'm talking about today is how some different ways, and one sort of way in particular that we can employ so that we don't have to live that feast and famine cycle, so by generating recurring revenue. So whether that's monthly recurring revenue or annual. Um, okay, so this is my current uh, business called Lonely Viking. Uh, lots of people want to know where the name comes from, so I'll just tell you quickly. I started the business by myself. I have Scandinavian heritage. I wanted a name that sounds cool, that's memorable, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. I was driving in the car. I thought, I'm like really sad and lonely. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I thought Lonely Viking sounds cool, and I immediately had an idea for a logo, and I was like, that's too easy, and then I did that logo on the same day. So that's the story behind that. Um, currently, I have a business partner, Martin. He's just sitting over there. Um, him and I teamed up probably about 10 months ago. Um, he's a full stack developer, currently working at Standard Bank. Um, and so he's got a, a complementary skill set. And so we work really well together. OK. So some ideas for generating that stands for monthly recurring revenue or annual recurring revenue. I prefer monthly because, I mean, you get it every month, even though it works out to the same amount at the end of the year, technically, but it just feels better. Um, have you ever heard of this thing called 83.33? Okay. So if you, take, if you can get 1,000 clients to pay you 83 rand 33 each per month, so it, let's say 84 rand, that equates to 1 million rand in turnover in a year, okay? Which sounds ridiculous, right? It sounds like, okay, if I can get 84 rand a month from 1,000 people, that's a million rand turnover a year. Which for some, a million rand turnover is like, well, that's, we're just playing games. And for other people, a million rand a year is like, what the heck? Like, I literally wouldn't know what to do with myself, okay? But I think it's just interesting. And, it, and if you look at it like this, because 1,000 people sounds like quite a lot. If you could get 350 rand a month from 250 people, that's basically, it's like a million 
rand and um, uh, to do a Jacob Zuma, a million rand and 5,000 rand. And <laughs> okay. Um, so 350 rand per client per month for 250 clients, and that's a million rand turnover a year. So the reason I tell you that is firstly because it will probably drive you crazy because it's such a small amount of money that you think, I'm sure I can get people to give me 84 bucks. Um, but it's also just to get you thinking that like, it's not that difficult, right? If you can think of something to do to, that uh, gives somebody value, but it's not such an astronomical amount of money that they're like, I really don't want to spend it. Um, there, there are a lot of people who can pay you 350 rand a month. There's definitely more than 250 of them. Um, Okay, so what are some ideas? Um, oh, and the, the one thing I want to say before I go to the next slide is this, often we can think of this recurring revenue thing as good for me but not good for my client because they've got to pay for something, okay? So the basis for this is that you've got to provide value to your clients. You've, you've got to give them something that they value that you've not tricked them into to giving you money every month. So we're going to, so just keep that in mind when we keep going. Okay. So, here are some ideas. Uh, and you've heard from a whole bunch of different talks in the panel, you would have heard probably of most of these things. Digital products um, is one thing, so uh, like courses like Warwick was talking about. Um, these are things you put the work in up front, but they continue generating revenue, obviously, if you get sales. Um, things like plugins that you can, uh, are subscription-based. And then productized services, which is essentially taking your service, packaging it like a product, giving it a set price, um, and then the most important part is giving rules for the, for the consumer, the buyer. Um, so because what we're used to is providing a service, but my client can phone me anytime he wants, or she can send me an email anytime she wants. Um, the thing with the productized service is that you package it like a product, and it's got, it's got rules of how the, the consumer, the customer can use it, okay, which frees you up. So there, there's a support email address. If you want support, you've got, to, you've got to email that email address. We get back to you with it within a certain amount of time, something like that, right? So it takes the pressure off of you to constantly be answering your phone, stuff like that. So if you think of a service that you provide and then turn that into a product, whatever that might be. Um, turnkey websites, which Anshin mentioned in her talk earlier, um, and so Martin and I are busy building that, and the, the, the reason we're doing that, and I'll tell you uh, our plan sort of is, so we build custom-built websites um, and provide marketing and lead generation and stuff for our clients, but we get a lot, like Anshin was saying, a lot of clients whose budget is too low um, for that service that we provide. So then we either turn them away or refer them um, to somebody. Actually, we've never referred them to anybody. We just turn them away because I don't know anybody who wants to do sites at that price. Um, so we're building this system. And we're kind of halfway in. Um, they, instead of using the WordPress dashboard, they get like a little settings page. They, they put their um, business name, their logo, they pick some colors with the color picker, and it literally uh, fills in that template with that predefined content. So now part of our funnel is to, they fill in a form on our website. If they select that their budget is lower than like the lowest that we'll go, it automatically sends them an email and it says, thank you for your inquiry. Unfortunately, it says it in a really nice way. We don't do work for less than that, but here's the service go, and then it sends them to a landing page where there's a video that explains to them how it works. And so the thinking behind that was that, look, we can't do the work for you, because th those clients, we provide a service where you can pick up the phone and phone us if you need something, but you need to pay for the privilege of talking to us like that, okay? And so um, essentially, we like, we still want their business, we still want their money, we still want to provide them with a good service and a good product, but we literally don't have the time or energy to do that. So that's the idea behind that. Um, marketing services like um, organic and paid traffic, SEO, PPC, conversion rate optimization, um, content uh, creation and marketing. Some of those things you can get your clients to pay for on a monthly basis with set parameters, like I'll give you you know, this much content or however you want that to work. And then 
what I mentioned earlier in the panel discussion, white label partnerships. Um, so you can basically get somebody else to do the, you get a white label SEO and they'll do the SEO for you, but the client is on your books. You get a, they, they charge you a set fee, you put a markup on that. Um, that's nice because you don't have to upskill. So like, but you also don't, you, you, let's say you've built a website for a client and they desperately need lead generation. So they want some traffic on their site. You don't know how to do Facebook um, PPC. You don't know how to do SEO, but you don't want to send them to somebody else for that. You can find white label partners um, and then you can get them to do the work. It stays on your books. Some of them have it set up so well that they actually, even through the support channel, they'll use your support email address and they'll literally act as though they're part of your business. Um, and then you just put a markup on that. So that means you don't have to upskill, you don't necessarily like have to do the work, you're kind of their salesperson in a way. And then uh, you can get some recurring revenue like that. This is just an example of like, uh, some way to provide value for clients is to give them stuff that they've not seen before that like makes them understand. So if you want to, um, you can tell a client about a funnel and you can tell them, okay, first you, like someone clicks on a paid ad, it takes them to a landing page, it does this, if they do that, they go there, if it doesn't, they go down there. And then there's this whole funnel system and this is actually our funnel for when we get a new client. And um, so you can try to explain that to a client and they will just be like, okay, it sounds cool. But when you show them this, you, you're showing them basically how you're going to give them value. And then you can explain how you're going to tweak it if things don't work. With, you keep track of all the analytics, stuff like that. Okay. And then this is where I'm really going to focus, and that's on website care plans. And you might hear it called maintenance plans. The reason we call it care plans is because care plan sounds much nicer than maintenance plan. Okay. Uh, um, maintenance sounds like you got divorced and you have to pay the money and you really don't want to, okay? So maybe that's just me. But um, website care means it's, it sounds valuable. Like we, and we really believe that it is valuable. We're not trying to trick these clients into giving us money. Um, but I'm going to go a little bit deeper into what these uh, website care plans look like and why they are awesome. Okay, so that's DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. It's a win-win for you and for your clients. Okay, so you are getting monthly recurring revenue and they're getting value. And now it goes back to also what I was saying earlier, you've got to have the right clients. You, you could have clients that um, it's a grudge purchase for them every month because they somehow think they can do it all themselves, which they technically can. Um, but if you've got the right clients, they are paying you for peace of mind and for, for taking the trouble off their hands, right? So it really is win-win. Um, and then they can be heavily automated, which is awesome for you. I love that gif. <laughs> and um, so basically, and I'm going to show you a little bit of this. You can automate almost the entire, like most of the steps of the care plans that we offer are automated. So it means we're generating revenue, but we've got time to spend on, on building our processes. You've heard the saying that says, a business owner should be working on their business, not in their business. Okay, so that's, that's our goal, is that we want to work on the processes of our business, want to work on like the marketing and the sales and all of that stuff. But the more time we spend working in it, doing the actual stuff, we don't get to work on that. So uh, the more automation we can do without being too impersonal is the way to go. Okay, so I'm going to show you these little pricing things from our website. Um, you can judge the pricing if you want to. You might think we're ripping people off. You might think it's crazy low. That's up to you. I'm going to tell you what they include. So our base one is 350 Rand a month. That includes um, hosting. It's hosted um, on a VPS. Uh, it's not on shared hosting because obviously shared hosting, there's some security concerns. Um, we do the WordPress core and theme updates uh, and plugin updates, um, which is automated, so um, that's easy. We do one monthly offsite backup, so typically these would be clients who like um, their, their sites aren't critical, they're not like constantly updating content, so they only need a, a backup once a month. 
And then it includes like a page builder like Beaver Builder or Elementor because we have the developer license. So then that, that alleviates them having to pay for that. So we bundle that in. And that's one of the ways we provide value um, is like you'll see in the later ones, we bundle um, plugins in. We get the developer license so that we can bundle that into the package. They, they don't have to go to the effort of finding out which plugin to use. They don't have to know how to install it. They don't have to pay for it. Um, and so because you know how to do this, you might think it's so easy they can just do it themselves. It's true, they can just do it themselves, but it doesn't mean that you're ripping someone off because they can do it themselves, right? They, you, you're providing value. They don't have to go and learn. Um, and so I think it's great. Okay, and then the next one is 800 bucks a month. Um, it includes all of that, and then it's a daily security scan. It's got um, like extra hardened security for malware prevention and stuff. Um, it's got daily offsite backups, and that's, those backups are redundant, so they're stored in two different places. Um, and none of them are locally, because that's a, well, one's locally, two are offsite, okay? But if you only got a local backup on your server, that's a bad idea. Uh, so please have a redundant backup. Um, there's uptime monitoring, and then we get pinged if, if their site goes down and we handle it immediately, and then we say, your site was down, but we fixed it. Um, we set up Google Analytics for them. They get a free SSL certificate, provided they're hosted on our hosting. Um, and then that monthly report I'm going to go through with you just at the end because it, it's really important. Um, that's part of the main part of the value that the client gets from us. Okay, you can see this one do is in, in dollars. Um, so we've set up that page on our website so that it checks the visitor's location via their IP address, and then some JavaScript changes the price from rands to dollars if they're not in South Africa, um, just so that we can, like we charge less to South Africans because we know what it's like to always pay in dollars, and it sucks. So if you're from overseas, you get to pay a little bit more, which we like. Um, that, one in, uh, that one includes... Um, so we go a bit deeper with the Google Analytics setup and we set up some goals for them and stuff like that after we've, we've had a little um, meeting. And then they get like a more detailed traffic report. Then we also include speed optimization, which you could use like WP Rocket or Swift Performance or something like that. But the server we run on has also got optimization with um, Breeze and that other one that starts with a V that I can't remember. Um, and then we uh, have a CDN built in there so the um, content is distributed. And then we include three hours of support time. So that's basically we'll update your content for you. Uh, we'll fix little things. But it, it excludes major design changes and um, feature and functionality changes. Uh, and then this one, if I'm honest, is there just so that that one looks more attractive. Um, <laughs> but this one's got hourly backups. Um, a weekly report, two different weekly reports. It's got uh, priority support and unlimited support time, but so far nobody's taken it. But lots of people have taken that one, so it was just a marketing ploy, but don't judge. Um, okay. So you're wondering how am I going to convince people to go for this? So ideas for getting care plan clients. This was difficult in the beginning because traditionally you build a website and you say, cool, go on your way. And then it's like um, every time they need something, they phone you and you charge them an hourly rate or something like that. Um, and this just works out so much better. And some of our clients use up those three hours every month. Some only use one. Some use three some months and like 20 minutes some months. And none of them ever complain for that. Like they have the peace of mind knowing that their website's cared for. Um, and especially for those where it's critical to their business, which is the kind of clients that we're looking for, they know that their site's always up. If it's not up, we get pinged and we make sure that we um, make sure that it's up as quickly as possible. If their site gets hacked, we clean it. Um, but we've never had a hacked site on this hosting. So, but we will do that. Um, Okay, so here's some things you can do. Now, we can talk about ethics later, okay? I know you all hate getting cold emails and stuff, but they do work. Um, so you can scrape for emails. Uh, scraping is such a horrible term. It sounds so gross. But, 
Basically, uh, we've got one tool that we use where you do a, a Google Maps search, and then the, that search uh, extracts data from Google My Business, and it gives you email addresses and names and stuff. And then we've got an automated system where, and so that'll be for like a niche, so you can search like dentists in Pretoria or whatever, and it'll give you their email addresses. And then Martin uh, wrote a Python script uh, that basically gathers information, so it'll get the URL of their website, it visits the website, it tests how fast it loaded, does it have Google Analytics, um, is it running WordPress, because if it's not, we're not interested, um, does it run WordPress, uh, is the WordPress um, version out of date, uh, takes a screenshot, and then based on that, if it fails the WordPress thing, then uh, we exclude it. If it doesn't, it gets sent to like a cold emailing platform that then populates the email with merge tags for their specific data. So, so cold email, you know, like I said, ethically, I don't know where you stand on that, but what we found is like if you personalize it, it doesn't seem so uh, intrusive. And so that's what we do. We, we put a screenshot of their website and then with some info, um, we noticed your site loads really slowly, or your WordPress is out of date, or whatever. And then that's one way to get clients. Um, and then the other is like communicating with your existing clients or clients that you've worked with before. And communication is the key. So we did an A-B split test of emails. Um, one was like a fear-based email, and one was like a value-based email. And so the one was like, what is going to happen if your site gets hacked or goes down or whatever? And we didn't make any sales out of that. But the value-based one, we made like a whole bunch of sales. Um, so our, my advice would be, if you're going to do something like this and you want to go for your existing clients, it is hard for them because they're like, well, I didn't have to pay this money before. Why do I have to pay it now? So that's why you've got to communicate that value. The, the fear thing really doesn't work. Um, it just makes people annoyed, I think. But like, after I said cold email, I felt like it just got really awkward in here, so... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like I said already, uh, to, to communicate the value, um, w again, we do the bundled plugins, we do the bundled page builders. I'm sorry to the devs, I know there's hate for the page, page builders, but it makes business sense. Um, and then you've got to take opportunities, okay? And when Dane was speaking earlier, it actually made me think Gutenberg's an opportunity for us to send out an email and say, like, but this is a fear one. <laughs> what are you going to do when Gutenberg comes and takes your site down? Because you didn't respond to my last email. Um, no, the thing is, you send that email, politely warn them, send it with a link to an article of what could happen. If that happens, the first person they're going to call is you, right? And then you get to be the hero that steps in there and sells them something every month for the rest of their lives. Uh, that was a joke. Um, so some other examples are like, you know when recently Google Maps API, um, like they released a statement and saying that basically the Google Maps API is no longer free. It is technically free because none of my clients get enough calls for it to be paid for. But it's an opportunity to say, um, we sent out an email because we had all our clients, which is probably not best practice, but on our own API key. And so we sent out an email to say, collectively, we're going to go over that threshold. So you've either got to send us an API key that we can put into your website, um, or you can go onto one of our care plans, and then it'll be covered. Um, another thing is like Google with the SSL now in Chrome, it, uh, says not secure now if you don't have an SSL certificate. So because we include SSL in our care plans, we send them an email to say, if you're on one of our care plans, you'll have SSL. None of them know how to set up SSL. Then we say, if you don't want to be on a care plan, we'll set up SSL for you, a once-off fee of X amount. Um, and we've gotten a few clients like that. Um, and then every time we, we uh, get like a new plugin that we use for certain clients, so like a lot of our clients had the free Yoast um, plugin, then we got SEO Press, um, a dev license, and then we sent out an email to everyone to say, hey, it's being included on everyone who's got a care plan, but it goes to everyone, <laughs> okay? Um, 
Cool, I'm going to have to run through this really quickly. So practically, here are three uh, services you can use uh, to kind of automate this process of a lot of it. Okay, so the first one's called MainWP, and that's a self-hosted one. So you've got to set it up. The nice thing is you can pay $399, $400, once-off, lifetime license, and you can use it on as many sites as you like. So it's very attractive from that point of view. I'll go through what they do just a little bit. There's another one called um, Infinite uh, WP. They essentially do the same thing. This is the one we use. It's called Manage WP. It's, a, it's like a software as a service. It's not self-hosted. Um, and I'm going to run through quickly that with you. Um, so here's what it does. It does backups. You can choose monthly backups, which are free. You can get daily backups, um, or you can get... Um, 12 hourly backups or even like you can get backups that run um, like what's that word all the time <laughs> I can't remember um, and so that's cool we use it also for cloning if we have to move sites it makes it super easy to move websites um, you can bulk update a whole bunch of uh, websites all at once all the plugins and you can do that with safe updates so it'll run it you say safe update or run a backup before um, it updates everything, so you can roll back to that if anything goes wrong. Um, and it takes screenshots as well, and it compares them, so it can tell you this page doesn't look like it did before. Do you want us to roll back, which is really cool. It does scheduled updates, so you can tell it like every Sunday morning at 3 a.m., like uh, update everything. It's got templates, which is like basically you can take a like your stack that you always use for a client website, so all the plugins and themes and stuff, and make a template out of it, and every time you get a new client, you hit one button and it does a, an install of everything all at once. Um, tags and labels, so we got those different plans, we tag our clients like that, and then you can just select all the ones for a specific tag and run updates on just those. Um, it's got integrations with like Google um, Analytics, stuff like that for the reporting. You can collaborate, so you can get like VAs and devs and stuff to um, be on your team, and then that allows them to log into the WordPress backend of each site by clicking a button, so you never have to give them a password. They can log in via there, uh, which is quite nice if that's the way you want to do it. Uh, you can white label the plugin, so in your client's backend, if they log in, it will say Lonely Viking, Care Plan, whatever. Um, and then the reporting is the thing that we find our clients love um, and so I'm going to just run through quickly what one of those looks like. So it'll have their name. And this is actually a real one. I've just blocked out who the client is just because it's their data. Um, so you can have a thing there, a little message, and then it tells them this is an overview. These are how many updates were run, uptime, site sessions. There's their Google page views. Um, the website's clean. It's got their page score, uh, speed score. It tells them all the plugins that were updated and how many times. Themes, okay, that doesn't run on 2017, but the other theme was not updated in, those, in that month. Uh, it tells them your site has 109 restore points, 39 of those were made this month. Um, that's the most recent backup. Here's a screenshot to say your site looks cool. 100%, um, well, 99.98% uptime. Um, and then this is what they really dig. It's a very simple Google Analytics thing, but a lot of clients love to know actually what was happening on their site. Um, security, the website gets scanned every day. It's clean. Um, okay, that site's a bit slow, and we're working on that. Um, and then we send also for clients on the higher ones, we send these detailed ones. That's Google Analytics. And you can see, like, we did some PPC and stuff for them, and it shows them their traffic went up 598%. They love seeing stuff like that. So that's nice. Um, and then this is their Facebook um, uh, performance on their PPC. So they love getting these things that they, can, that they can organize, I mean, that they can understand. And that's me. Now go make it rain. <laughs> Shane Riley, ladies and gents.